This video will demonstrate how to simulate airflow in an air intake restrictor, such as that used in the Formula SAE competition. We'll be using ANSYS Discovery to set up the simulation, measure the flow velocity and pressures through the nozzle. ANSYS Discovery allows us to either create or import the geometry. We can quickly set up a simulation, solve it, and look at results in real time as you make additional changes to the model. In this example, I'll first import my geometry, which was already created. If we look at a cross section through the nozzle, we can verify our diameter is less than 20 millimeters as specified by the Formula SAE rules. This is the maximum restrictor diameter allowed for gas-fueled vehicles. Therefore, we won't be changing this dimension. To create the simulation, notice we are in Discovery's Explore stage, which will provide us with real-time simulation results. We'll set up the simulation using the Quick Start ribbon and selecting Internal Flow. Following the prompts in the bottom of the window, we will first select any face bounding our inlet, and then simply selecting a face surrounding the outlet. You'll notice that with only these two mouse clicks, we now have a fluid volume defined, the inlet and outlet locations are defined, and an internal airflow simulation is ready to run. I'll then go ahead and change my inlet flow velocity to 22 meters per second. I'll hit the Solve button, and we will quickly see the resulting velocity streamlines. We can look at particle tracks, as well as contours through a cross-section. Another helpful feature is the use of monitors to review specific results of the simulation. The pressure drop and max velocity monitors are already set up. I will add a new monitor to measure the volume flow rate at the inlet. I'll remain in the Discovery Explore stage and modify the geometry as a design study. For example, I can use the Pull tool with the Pivot Edge option to change the diameter of the inlet. You'll notice the Fluid Domain volume automatically updates and Discovery solves for the new solution immediately. Once the flow has stabilized, our monitor graphs are updated. We can take this further by parameterizing one of the dimensions. I'll use the Move tool to change the length of the outlet section. I'll then insert a ruler dimension back to the nozzle location. I can click on the Add a Parameter icon, and then I'll go to the Groups panel and rename this parameter to something more meaningful. I can then click on the Variations table and manually input a table with various inputs to run. Instead, I'll let Discovery automatically build the table by selecting the Generate Variations button, choosing my parameterized dimension that I want to change, and in this example, I'll run a study by changing the length from 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters using 11 increments. I'll select the Create button and you'll see the variations table populated with my design studies. I'll then choose to solve all, and you'll see the simulation automatically modify the geometry, run each specific case, update the results, and then move on to the next design iteration. We can make use of our monitors to determine an optimal design, and if there's a specific design that meets our criteria, we can select that specific row and then choose Set as Current. Our model on the screen is now that specific geometry from that design study. If you want to take the simulation further, we can move to Discovery's Refine stage or transfer the model to Fluent if we need to define more complex physics or produce a higher fidelity solution.